This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Remember, if you control your emotions, you're going to get to the des destination that God wants you to be. But if your emotions are out of control, you get out. So in trouble, the best thing for you to do is to choose the right emotion so you can get to where God's trying to get you. Amen. Have some self-control so you can get to where you want to get you. But we keep letting our self-control take us back and take us into all of these things that when we get there, we say, how did I get here? How did this happen? Now watch this, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 45 through 48. I, I, I want to show you this, Deuteronomy 28, 45 through 48. Now, uh, this is pretty, pretty amazing. Again, trying to convince you that you have control over, over these emotions. Now, we are going back to the law. And so under the law, sin was judged harshly. But under the grace of God, which we live under the covenant of grace, God's judgment is on Jesus. Even though you don't behave right all the time, his judgment still is on Jesus. But it's good to see how God views a thing even under a law. And so I want to show you this because this was quite fascinating to me. It, it just shows you that God is not an unjust God. So look at this, Deuteronomy 28, verse uh, 45, what did I say? Okay, 45 through 48, 45 through 48. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee, and they'll overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. So they're being judged for not keeping the commandments. And uh, he says, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Stop. Did you see that? He said, because you didn't serve the Lord with joyfulness emotion, and you didn't serve the Lord with gladness emotion for all the things he'd done. You know what he just said? He says, they're getting ready to be judged because they didn't serve God with the right emotions. They're getting ready to be judged because they didn't serve God with the right emotions for all the things that he's done. He says, therefore, shalt thou, here's the judgment. He says, now, because you didn't serve God with the correct emotions, you didn't choose the right emotions, joyfulness and gladness, therefore shall thou serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send. And, and what are these enemies going to look like? In hunger, because you didn't serve him with the right emotions. Thirst, because you didn't serve him with the right emotions. Nakedness, because you didn't serve him with the right emotion. You're going to be in want of all things because you didn't serve him with the right emotions for all the things he did. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee all because you didn't serve him with the right emotions? All right, now, that's not even, you know, what we deal with today, but that's under that covenant. But he here's the point, me showing you that. And some of you better be glad you ain't under that covenant. Yes. 
all the stuff that God does for you, how sometimes you don't have a right attitude and you're not grateful and you murmur and you complain and you go around and you want more and you can't be thankful for what he's already done. If we were under that covenant, a lot of us would be destroyed. But thank God we're not under that covenant. Somebody say, thank God for Jesus. But what was he saying here? What he says was this. If God <laughs> will judge people for having the wrong emotions in serving him, that only concludes that they could have made a choice to have the right emotions. Amen. They could have decided and chosen to have the correct emotion. It would not be just. It would be an unjust thing to do to judge somebody for something they did if they didn't have the authority to do something differently. They had the authority and they had the choice to choose the right feelings. They could have chosen the right feelings. Just like you and I could choose the right feelings. They didn't choose the right feelings and they were judged for not choosing the right feelings because they could have chosen the right feelings. So don't come telling me I can't help how I feel. How many of you heard that before? You know you done heard that before. Well, I can't help how I feel. Yes, you can. Do you mean how you, you know, because my, my mom and dad were like, well, get the belt and the switch and say, well, let me help you. Let me help you. <laughs> <Let> me, <laughs> now, everybody in the neighborhood had hedges. God dog, we had a, a, a community with hedges. They didn't have no grass, but they had them hedges, boy. <laughs> you could have made a decision to do that. You could have made a decision to choose that. Now, go to St. John chapter 14, verse 1. St. John 14, verse 1. Uh, again, you can choose. You, that's an amazing, amazing revelation to me is the fact how long have we been lied to about our feelings? There's nothing I can do about it. You can. You can choose what feelings you want. He says here, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Th that, that sounds like you have authority, right? Don't you let your heart be troubled. Well, what, why would he even say something like that if you had no authority over, over whether or not you felt troubled or not? I wrote a book years ago on how to trouble your trouble. And it talked about how you don't have to be, even though you're in trouble, you don't have to be troubled because you can choose to have peace in the midst of trouble. Remember, if you control your emotions, you're going to get to the des destination that God wants you to be. But if your emotions are out of control, you get out. So in trouble, the best thing for you to do is to choose the right emotion so you can get to where God's trying to get you. Amen. Have some self-control so you can get to where you want to get you. But we keep letting our self-control take us back and take us into all of these things that when we get there, we say, how did I get here? How did this happen? Why do I keep ending up with the same kind of no good for nothing man? There's a reason for that. The level of a woman's self-esteem will always draw the type of person to her. Yep, you better see yourself better. You better see yourself better if don't nobody agree with the better that you see about yourself. <laughs> you need to let that joker know, look, you, you, don't, you don't even understand what you're getting. I know I'm fine, and I know I'm awesome and smart, and I know I'm amazing, all right? I might not have no, no three-inch waist, but, you know, what you going to do with a three-inch waist? You, know, you need a little something to hold on to. You don't know no three-inch waist. <laughs> Amen. Three-inch waist. Something the matter with you. I know some of y'all are like, huh? Where'd that come from? I don't know. All right, now, in fact, go to Deuteronomy 30. Let me, I think this is where that came from. Deuteronomy 30, verse... <laughs> Deuteronomy 30, 19. Yeah. And I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set thee before you, I've set before you life and death, choice now. I've set before you life and death, choice. Choice. I've set before you blessing and cursings, choice. This is awesome because God says, I'm setting... The trust is before you, and he says, before I stop, I'm going to tell you what to choose. Look at that. And then he says, therefore, choose life. 
It's almost like God was saying, I set before you life and death, blessings and cursing, and if you're too dumb to know what to choose, <laughs> choose life. That both thou, look at this, look at the power of your choice. Your thou and your seed may live and prosper and be successful because you made the right choice. Now, I, I believe when you choose life, he, he says and recommends choose life. I believe when you choose life, you can't talk about choosing life and not choosing emotional stability. It's not, it's not life to, to, to not have stable emotions. It's not life to not have authority and, and, and a choice where your feelings are concerned. So in, in, in involved in choosing life is choosing emotional stability. Uh, you know, I have a right to choose whether or not I am going to be in control of my emotions or I'm going to have a right to choose whether or not I'm, I'm not going to be in control of my emotions. You have a right to choose. You have a right to choose. So I turn to two people and say, I have a right to choose how I feel. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. I have a right to choose how I feel. Somebody can come and cuss you out and maybe spit a little bit in your face. And you still, see, you, you, know, you know how you responded, right? You responded because you have traditionally marked in stone how you're going to respond emotionally. Wish you would. And all of that is, that is that same part of the fear of being disrespected that causes you to respond as if the disrespect has already occurred. And it just gets you in trouble. It's the story of the guy who purchases the new car. He's driving down Old National Highway. Somebody hits his car from behind. You jump out the car and you, you know, you, you chose your emotions. It was just real quick. You jumped out the car and like, no, you didn't hit my car and you were very aggressive. And then you hit the guy and the police was pulling up at that time and saw you assault the guy. And it was on a Friday and before you left, your boss said you can't be late no more. And if you're late again, I'm going to have to let you go. And on that Thursday, your wife said, don't lose your job. I'm tired of going through this. You lose your job, I'm going to go. And so they arrested you for assault, put you in jail. It was the weekend. The judge ain't coming back till Tuesday. You lost your job on Monday and your wife on Tuesday. <laughs> and you sat there in the cell and you asked yourself this question, how did I get here? The answer, your emotions drove you all the way there. How many times are you going to put in jeopardy the blessing that God has for your life, but he, you can't ever walk into it because as soon as you like a step away, your emotions from a negative place leads you away from the design place because you have no self-control, no temperance. You won't practice temperance because you see that as being weak. Somehow in your mind, you think by losing it, it shows how big of a man you are. That's not the truth. It shows you that you're the weakest punk on the planet by that time because you can't even control what you're supposed to have control over. And like laughter, you're quiet because you know this is the truth. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 and 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, look what happens, it's life and it's peace. Here you have a choice. When you talk about carnality here, it's, it's, it's literally referring to in context here to be dominated by your senses. It's like... You know, you're allowing what you see to dominate how you feel. You're allowing what you hear to dominate how you feel. You're allowing, you know, what you smell to dominate how you feel. Somebody says how that works. I mean, somebody might not be smelling all right, but, you know, you got to be mean. And you don't know they just got put out their house and they've been struggling to do stuff and it's dominating your feelings. So what happens is to be dominated by just your emotions and your feelings, it'll, it'll lead to death or separation from the great things that God's trying to do in your life. But he says if you're spiritually minded, wherever your mind goes, your emotions going to follow. If you're spiritual minded, it'll lead to peace and life. So now you have to choose to be spiritual minded and allow the Word of God. In fact, go to John 6, 63. What does it mean when I talk about being spiritual minded? What are the, what's the essence of... Uh, of a being spiritual minded. John chapter 6 and 63.
because in Romans 8, it, it talks about, you know, uh, when we're spiritual minded, we can produce emotional stability. When we're spiritual minded, peace and life, life and peace. He says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The question is, will you choose to allow the Word of God to dominate your emotions? It's a choice. You're going to be dominated by uh, the carnal or you're going to be dominated by the Word of God. And you think about it. In that time where you're choosing the type of emotions and how you're going to feel, when was the last time you said, hold on a minute, let me go to the Word? Hold on a minute, let me go and pray. Hold on a minute, let me pause and stick this tape in. It works. The issue is we just don't do it. It, it works. It'll calm you down. It'll get you to a place where you can think, but you just don't do it. Because I, I guess if you, if you don't honor that word and exalt it enough for you to say, well, this is what I'm going to turn to in the time of great temptation and in the time of... Uh, of uh, being tempted to choose the wrong emotion, that the Word of God can help you to always choose the right one. But not many people reverence the Word enough to go to it when they need it. You know, the Bible doesn't just tell us to have the, choose the right emotion, you know, when everything's going right. He tells us to choose the right emotion even when things are not going right. Look at uh, John 16, 33. John 16, 33, choose the right emotion. No, no, let's go to Philippians first. Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Because here, I, I want to I I mention something here. I think it's so important as Christian people that we understand that we need to be accountable for our feelings. Don't try to make the devil responsible for it. We need to be accountable for our emotions. You need to accept the accountability for your emotions. Because if you're out of control and you beat your wife, all I'm going to hear is excuses of why you beat your wife. Nobody want to hear no excuses. You got to be accountable for your emotions. Well, I decided to get in a fight and, and beat somebody up. But you got to be accountable for your emotions. Well, I decided to shoot somebody because they disrespected me. You got to be accountable for your emotions. And then this precious life ends up in jail, never fulfills the will of God for his life because his emotions took him out of the play, took him out of the, the place of where he could do what he needs to do because you won't be accountable for your emotions. And that's a lot of things with Christians. They don't want to be accountable for nothing. They want to blame it on God or blame it on the devil, but I don't want any accountability for this thing. It's either God or the devil, but you ain't had nothing to do with it. Well, if that's the case, why did he give you free moral agency, the right to choose and to make a choice? And if you're not choosing and making a choice, oh, when you want to choose and make a choice to do what you want to do, then you want to do it. And what God's trying to speak to you, you don't want to hear what he got to say then. But now, but now when something bad happens, well, that was the devil over that was God. And we, God was like, well, who told you to get that, that car that's hurting you? Well, I, that's just what I wanted. Well, see, as easy as you made a choice to get just what you wanted, Are you seeing what I'm saying? We've got to be accountable for our emotions. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to be accountable for our emotions. <laughs> Look at verse 6. He says, be careful for nothing, or don't be anxious about anything, or don't worry about anything. Wow. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about nothing. Don't be anxious about nothing. Did you hear what he just said? Yes, stuff's going to happen. He says, but don't be anxious about it. Don't worry about it. You know where your confidence is? You know what you believe in? You know who you trust in? He says, don't worry about it. Be careful for nothing. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He says, instead of worrying about it, take it to prayer, be thankful for what you know, and, and watch God do some stuff for you. By prayer and thanksgiving, let it be known unto God. By prayer and thanksgiving. Here's what he says. Situation happens, go to God and be thankful for what he's already done about the situation. Look at verse 7. He says, and the peace of God. He says, when you do that in the middle of trouble, rather than worrying, be thankful for what God's already said. And the peace of God. Look what happens. Your emotions now are, have been chosen by you. When did you choose them? When I decided to be thankful for what God has already done about the thing rather than worrying about the situation that appears before me right now.
Peace will guard your emotions. Peace will guard your emotions. Say this out loud. My peace, my peace. is my most valuable asset. My most valuable I, will not spend it I will not spend it on other people's drama. If I take care of my peace, my peace will take care of me. Amen. Look at John, 16, uh, John 16, 33. It, it, it's not just saying, well, you know, choose to be in control of your emotions only when things are going right. No, he's like, when it's not going right. He said, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have what? Peace. peace. In him or in his word, you're going to have peace. He said, in the world you shall. It ain't might. It ain't might. It ain't, well, if I do these ten things, it won't. It, 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 there is no way out of, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have tribulation when you done did everything in your mind that is right. And somebody going to tribulate on you because you done did everything you thought it was right. <laughs> you ain't got to do nothing wrong to be tribulated on. <laughs> Boy, I got some new vocabulary coming out this morning. I'm going to have to add these to the Ebonics Dictionary. <laughs> you're going to have trouble. You're going you're to have trouble. Why do Christians, like, you know, you're surprised. Oh, my God, this is happening to me. Oh, God, they're talking about me. Oh, God, I was betrayed. Seriously? In this here world. <laughs> You's going to have some trouble. <laughs> your emotion, you determine. In the world, I'm going to have tribulation, but I've already decided to be of good cheer. Baby, need a pair of shoes. Look, you got a light bill due. How you going to pay your rent? All your money spent. A little bit about some food. Baby, need a pair of shoes. Look, you got a light bill due. Even got a gas bill too. Telephone disconnect. Wait, next paycheck. Paycheck bounce on you. What are you going to do? I'm going to be of good cheer in the midst of all of it. Praise God. I've already decided I'm going to be in good cheer. Because if I stay in good cheer, I'll get to the destination where the supply is. But if I lose it, I'm going to go so far away from it, and then I'm going to have to hear rerouting, rerouting. I said build up cheer because I've already overcome the world. Are your emotions controlling your life? Many people think that their emotions cannot be controlled. As a Christian, not only can you help how you feel, but you have, God has equipped you and provided for you the necessary resources to help you control, harness, and take charge of those negative feelings in your life. If you're not in control of your emotions, then you're not in control of your life. You know, you gotta watch what you say, everything that comes out of our mouth too. So the things that's normally going on in our life is as a result of us speaking the wrong way. I'm not saying those negative feelings won't come. I'm just saying when they, they do come, you can neutralize them, control them, harness them, and not let them lead you in a direction that's going to be destructive to your life. Get the Secret to Stable Emotions seven message series for a love gift of $40 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Men, it's our time to dive deeper at the 2021 Mentality Men's Conference. Join us online on September 10th and 11th for two days of dynamic teachings from Creflo Dollar. A real man looks to God for his identity and his worth. Get ready to receive real life resolution from raw and uncut messages at the 2021 Mentality Conference. You don't prove you're a real man by doing something that can take you away from your family, by doing something that can get you arrested, by doing something that can get you killed. 
Don't miss out on this revival of manhood. A real man takes steps necessary to keep his mind and his actions pure. Mark your calendars and register today. I want to be a man according to God's way, God's standard, God's will. Register now by texting MENTALITY to 51555 or by visiting CreflodollarMinistries.org. Looking for a deeper understanding of the Word? Join us for service every Sunday at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, no matter where you are. Everything in your life is determined by your thinking. If you change your thinking, you change your life. And you have to change your thinking to be in line with the one who created you. No walls, no limits. Join believers from all over the world as we grow in grace. You've got to get the specific word to think on, and that's the word of grace, the gospel of grace. Set your reminder, invite a friend, and join a worldwide audience of believers. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or text Watch Now to 51555 for more information about our services and streaming times. Be a part of church without walls. See you online. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Holy Spirit's not sitting, sitting around reminding you of what you did in the past. That's condemnation. He's not going to do that. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species of being. You know why? Because of the image of Christ. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. When you give, your gift goes to work, spreading the gospel, uplifting communities, connecting believers from all over the world. It's easy to support the ministry with your giving through Change Express. The process of giving has never been easier for those on the go, so get started today. Go to www.creflodollarministries.org forward slash Change Express now to sign up for Change Express. Easy, automatic giving. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.